Fire! Fire! We got a fire! <laughs> Hello, America. How we doing today? Yeah, we had a fire. We we had two fires. Well, there are there have been two fires. We had one, and somebody else had a fire. Um, what happened the other night? This has been about four or five nights ago. John was driving his truck with his grain trader on the back over to Waukini to Cargill. Been in the, in the videos before, you know. We're going over there, it's toward the end of the night, it's dark, and uh, Kirk and uh, the crew and I, we were on a field, I was in the grain cart, and they were taking this stuff over to uh, John and, and uh, a couple other drivers were taking it over to uh, Cargill. Well, we get a phone call, Kirk gets a phone call, John's truck is on fire. Oh, oh, what happened? Well, John said, oh, the truck's on fire. And we think, oh, it's all destroyed. Well, what had happened was he was driving down the road in the brake chamber, which is, uh, I'm trying to see the screen here, right above that wood, right? Where am I? I can't see. This screen's too small for me. My eyes ain't good enough anymore. But anyway, um, what happened is this brake chamber went bad. That brake chamber went, uh, the, the diaphragm on the inside, let me, let me explain how a uh, brake chamber works. Let me pull around here and explain how a brake chamber works for people that don't know. Some of your drivers know all about this, but some people don't. So we're gonna get right up here close, all right? Here is the old brake chamber. This is the bad one, okay? And what happens is on this side of the brake chamber, there's a heavy duty spring. On this side, there's a, a, a much lesser spring. It's just kind of a return spring. All right, what happens is, when you pop the brakes on the dash and you hear that whoosh, brakes popping, okay? What you're doing is releasing all the air pressure that's built up in the center chamber here. There's a, there's a uh, air pressure builds up in here and there's a diaphragm, like a, uh, a, a bladder or what I've referred to before as a pancake. It's a, uh, uh, it, it makes a seal from, for air, air can't pass. All right, so anyway, this diaphragm sits in here and there's a big spring in here, okay? What happens is when the air comes into this, this air hose comes into here, this chamber, it builds air pressure up and pushes that diaphragm over. This rod comes over and there's a plate welded to the end of it. Think of it like a great big head nail, okay? There's, the shaft comes in, comes all the way up to here and there's a big plate, all right? So on that plate, the diaphragm pushes that plate and compresses this spring. So when you push the brakes in on the dash to release the park brakes, this airs up, compresses this spring, which pulls that rod back, okay? That rod pulls back and releases the brakes from the, there's a uh, slack adjuster, which goes to a rod and that rod goes into this S cam, which is down there, I'll show you in a second. What happens is you push the air in the brakes, this compresses, releases the brakes. You've got 110 pounds or whatever the truck has, 120, 110 pounds of air pressure in this little section here, compressing the spring, keeping the air brakes off. Then when you're driving down the road and you, hey, I need to stop, air goes in this other chamber over here and let's say you have 110 pounds here and zero over here. This air pressure will compress this spring, okay? If you put 100 pounds on this side, the 100 pounds on this side, 100 pounds on that side, they cancel each other out, and then the spring would win out and compress the brake, okay? If you only had, a, if you have 100 pounds in here, only 50 pounds on this side, the, 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 the spring will kind of push that rod back out and softly apply the brakes. So when you're hitting the brake on the floor, that is adjusting this air pressure from 10 to 30 to 50 to 100 to 30 to 50. It depends on how hard you push on the brake. That's what causes the shaft to go in and out and engage the slack adjuster, okay? The slack adjuster is in there so that when the, as the brake pad wears out, it adjusts for this. So it, it adjusts the slack that's in the brake, okay? Slack adjuster. All right, so that's how our brake chamber works. Okay, <clears throat> what we did, is we got in here on the slack adjuster and ratcheted the slack adjuster loose so it could travel. The problem is every time you back up and hit the brakes, that will ratchet and readjust, self-adjusting slack adjuster will readjust that brake. So what you do is you take right here on the side of almost every, this is called a maxi. Um, 
Not every brake, not every brake has this whole section. Some of it only has this little section here. That's just for application brakes, like on the steer axle. Okay, if it's got this and this, it's called a maxi and it's a parking brake, okay? Now, to get this to unlock, what you can do is take this bolt out, take this bolt out and there's a, uh, it's like a T-bolt. Take that T-bolt out, you pop this cover off, you stick it in there, turn it a quarter and you find that little notch in there. Once you find the notch, you take the nut on there and you tighten the nut up. And what that does is you're manually compressing that spring. You're putting a bolt in there and hooking that bolt and pulling that plate toward you, compressing that spring. Therefore, you don't have a, a, a park brake on this brake anymore. If you, if you, what they do, what they call caging the brake, okay? So we did that, we caged this brake. We didn't use this bolt. We have another one in the, uh, in the, in the tunner for this situation. Put it in there, you tighten it up and it's not a parking brake anymore. So, John could drive it home. So we took the back roads, instead of getting on the freeway, we took the back roads and came back to the shop. All right, we get to the shop, we take that off, and we'll probably be able to see it better on the other side, over here. Yep, right here. There, I gotta shorten you up. My jack stand here, my uh, tripod stand. All right, here is an S-cam. This is a dirty one, we gotta clean that up still. All right, this is the S-cam. When the, uh, the brake is applied, it pushes on this slack adjuster, which, let me get this wood out of the way. Uh, bear with me, people. I gotta get my, my camera adjusted properly. There we go. All right, underneath here, let's see if I can see it. Uh, right here, that's the slack adjuster. Now this is a brand new, new brake chamber new uh, clevis that attaches to the slack adjuster. This slack adjuster is like a ratchet. No different. We don't have one. Ugh. Be right back with you. All right, we're back. I went and got this ratchet, okay? It's just your regular old craftsman type ratchet. I don't know, this is a K tool. Anyway, it's a regular ratchet. This mechanism is inside of this box right here, okay, that is a slack adjuster. It's an automatic slack adjuster. And what happens is as you push the brakes down, that engages, pushes on that slack adjuster. That slack adjuster goes through this rod. This rod comes up, well, let me get you an angle. Goes through the slack adjuster, it twists. It's inside this pipe, there's a, another rod that comes out to this S-cam and it twists this S-cam, okay? That probably won't make a bit of sense to you looking at that but I come over here where we have brakes on this side and it'll make more sense there's your brake brake pad and brake pad there's your drum what happens is as you're driving down the road and you apply the brakes the brake pads are in here and yep. hello it's a boss man what? I'm here at the shop. Okie dokie. Well, we're just coming into town. Alright. Uh, we'll be out there in a minute and get back to throwing that truck back together. Alright. Well, I'm explaining it to everybody on a, on a video right now and you're interrupting my video. See you in a little bit. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Alright. So what happens on, brake, on drum brakes, people probably already know this, but you got a drum and you have brake pads on the inside. And when you, when you hit the pedal, it pushes those drums, you know, the brake pads up against the inside of the drum. Okay? So right here, these brake pads are sitting in here. And when you apply a pressure, a, a put foot pressure, it pushes out on the drums and rubs on the inside and causes friction and brings you to a stop, okay? Disc pads are different. There's a disc and the, the pads are on the outside and they squeeze the disc, okay? These push out from the inside, okay? Now, what causes that on a uh, air brake system is the S-cam. Right here is the S-cam. Let me get a little light in here for you. See this S-cam? As that twists, imagine that twist. From here to here is only about an inch, but from here to here is about two and a half inches, okay? So as that twists, Okay, as this, this piece goes down and that one goes up, 
this piece right here will push on this and push this bottom brake pad down. This one will push this upper pad up. Okay, make sense? All right, <clears throat> so that's how an S-cam air brake system works for the most part. Well, we're crooked, there we go. All right, so we got it home, we tore it apart, found out it was that brake chamber was bad, which was making the park brakes somewhat engaged. And they're not locking up engaged, but they're dragging. And because they're dragging, they got to heating up, and next thing you know, they caught fire. So John jumps out, his fire extinguisher, and puts the fire out. Then it relights, and he puts it out again, because the metal and everything is so hot. It finally got to cool off where it won't reignite. We show up a little bit later, we back everything off, we delivered the load, and then we limped on home. We limped home, pulled it in the shop, started tearing apart, and the brake pads, where are they at? I'm trying to think, where are the old pads at? Or brick drum? Where did I put them? Somewhere. Uh, Kirk must have thrown them in the junkyard already. Anyway, <clears throat> they were just in bad shape. They, they, you know, they just catch all kinds of heck. Okay, going down a freeway, there's not a lot of debris flying around, okay? But on a gravel road, think about this. You're on a gravel road and that front tire kicks up a little bit of dust, okay? A little bit of dust, a little bit of rocks. It comes back here and it gets on this back axle here, but it's not that much. But once you get the duals back here and they really stir the air up and all that sand and gravel and everything and dust kicks up, this back axle catches a lot more abuse. So this back axle looked really bad compared to the front axle. Front axle is actually okay. We took the wheels off and looked at them. They're pretty good still. The brake, the, the airbags are good, okay? See these airbags? They're in pretty good shape and everything. Nice and supple. Here's the airbags that came off the back. And this is what rocks and gravel do when you're in, uh, in that kind of environment. Let me set you down here. Now these, these airbags had not blown yet, but you see they were in bad shape. That's a rock probably flung up there and hit that. And see how dried out and crusty they are? It was just a matter of time this was gonna go bad. So while we're under there, doing all this work, let's put a couple airbags in. So we went and got a couple airbags, stuck them in earlier today. And uh, the valves. Where's the old valve? It's the old valve. Anyway, these valves right here, uh, uh, connectors, I'm sorry, connectors here, they went bad. They just, uh, trying to get them off and they just had a hard time getting them off. Finally got them off, but kind of damaged them. So I had to run to Hayes, to the Peterbilt dealer and buy this little valve. That little valve right there. Thank you, guess. It's that little, it's plastic. It's got a little brass on the bottom here, but the rest of it's all plastic. It's got a little couple of O-rings. Um, People that aren't familiar with trucks, this is a just a push-in type connector. But are you familiar with like uh, uh, shark shark bite um, uh, plumbing valves, okay, or plumbing fittings? Shark bite, where you just push it in and they grab, okay. Kind of like what's the old Chinese finger torture test or uh, torture uh, thing? Um, you got that weave and you you stick one on. You you put your fingers in, but then you can't pull them out. That's what it is, okay? It's called a shark bite. That's for plumbing on, it's pretty much the same kind of system, but it's in Peterbilt, they think they just call it a quick connect or a push on, push on connector, whatever. Went over to Hayes, bought two of these. They cost more than the airbags did. Just ridiculous. Well, about, about the same. But I mean, it's just outrageous. It's just, you know, the prices on stuff. And then you wonder why it's a $180,000 brand new Peterbilt. You know, it's just their, their prices are terrible. All right, so while we were looking at all this, we also found a, 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 a wheel seal was leaking. So that's what all this crud is here. That's oil from the interior that lubricates the inside of the, the, the axle. There's a seal that goes right here and there's another one on the outside. But this seal right here went bad and it started getting oil in here. So, hey, we're, we got it tore apart, let's fix it. So we went down, we cleaned it all up, and we took the hub down to the local shop, mechanic and everything, and he has a press to press the seal in and uh, put, new, you know, put bearings in it and the whole nine yards. But you got it all apart, put new stuff in. 
So when Kurt gets back, I'm gonna let him put that in because I don't wanna mess it up. And if it messes up and there's a wheel seal leaking, hey Stan, you messed that up. Not me, I didn't do it. So I've been doing other things. I've been putting these valves on and everything, uh, just clicking things together and whatever while they're, they, they had to run outside out, out of the field and take care of some stuff. So I thought, well, while I'm over here doing this, maybe I'll take a, make, make a little video and explain, I hope I explained air brakes a little bit better to people have no idea how they work. Uh, most truck drivers should know how to do their, how this works simply because it's on the CDL test. Uh, but even that, um, I was recently talking to a driver had been driving about as long as I have, and he had no idea how S cam brakes work. He's like, what's that? What's S cam brake? That right there. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. How long have you been driving? <laughs> so anyway, now you know, you're educated, you're educated a little bit better than you were yesterday. Take care. I'm going to get my hands greasy. Y'all take care. Bye. Are you guys still here? Haven't you got something better to do? Okay, now this is just getting ridiculous.